Hi, I'm Phil Howard, Superintendent of the Jackson City School District with some information and a video on the start of our school year. As you're probably well aware, the Jackson City Board of Education has implemented a mask policy, mask slash shield actually, policy for our students, staff, and visitors. Anytime you are in the Jackson City School District buildings, you will be required to wear a shield or a mask. This is some information that I had planned to go over at our last board meeting, but unfortunately, due to uh, behavior of four or five different individuals, I was unable to present this information. It's information that I think is pertinent for our students and, and families, so I wanted to make sure that everybody had the opportunity to hear this information. If we take a look at last year when we came back to school and the quarantining process, we were required to quarantine students based on what's known as close contact. Close contact was defined as a prolonged period of time, 15 minutes, within six feet of a positive individual. And that was even with us wearing masks. Everybody was wearing masks when we, when we came back to school last year. So we were going through periods of time where we were quarantining dozens upon dozens of students in, in each of our buildings. So if you've been in close contact with someone last year when the school started who tested positive for COVID-19, you were required to self-quarantine. At that time, the quarantine was 14 days. You had to avoid contact with other people. They later changed that to, I believe, 10 days. And then later on, actually, they went to what they called a modified quarantine method. And the modified quarantine method says that if you are wearing a mask, if students are wearing a mask and they're within just three feet of each other, if there's at least three feet of space and a mask, and you're also doing some other types of uh, COVID precautionary measures, then you won't be required to quarantine. So let me give you an example of the number of students that we were having out when we were under the old quarantining methods. In December of last year, we had at times over 120 kids out at Jackson High School. Jackson Middle School. At the high school we had, you know, we had over 120, we had 165 kids out one day at Jackson High School. Most of these were quarantines. It wasn't uncommon for us to have 150 to 200 students that were out of the district quarantined. The percent that was absent, we had about 20% out, which means we had 80% obviously present. And we were having around 20% of our kids, up to 23% of our kids, out on a daily basis. We pretty much limped through the month of December to get to Christmas. We had a lot of our staff that was out. We were having trouble finding subs. We were struggling with uh, transportation, making sure that we could get our kids here to school. And then obviously we had a ton of our students that were out. When they changed the, went to the modified quarantining process. So if I take a look at the month of February, after we came back from break, they went to the modified quarantining process, meaning that if, you, if students had a mask on, there was at least three feet between them, we did not have to quarantine. So for the month of February, you know, we only had 9% of our kids absent one day, 5 6% each day. So we're having 93 94% of our students in attendance simply because our students were wearing masks. So let's talk about the flow chart for quarantine. The guidelines for quarantine after exposure in K-12 classroom settings. If you have all three of these mechanisms in place, and they are masking, physical distance at least three feet, and some other type of COVID prevention policy, cleaning, different types of things, hand washing, hand sanitizing. If you have those three things in place, then you follow the flow chart. Individuals can safely remain in the normal in-person classroom setting and participate in extracurricular and sport activities as long as they have no symptoms. So you're not quarantining those people. If you do not have these three things in place, is the person who is exposed vaccinated? 
if they're vaccinated, then they have to wear a mask indoors as much as possible. Uh, they need to take a test after three to five days. But they are not quarantined if they're vaccinated. Unless symptoms arrive or they test positive after the three to five days. If the con if, is the contact vaccinated, if the answer to that is no, did the contact consistently wear a mask? If the answer is no, now we're going to back to the old quarantining method. They're out of school for X number of days. Um, they can't attend or participate in sports or extracurricular activities. After five days, they can go take a test and then come back to school after the seventh day. So, but the point is, they are going to be quarantined if they're not wearing a mask. This is information from the Ohio Department of Health. And if we scroll down to page 10, I believe it is, you can see that K-12 school environment under modified quarantine procedures, unvaccinated students who have been exposed to COVID-19 in school settings can continue to attend school and participate in sports and extracurricular activities if both students were wearing masks consistently and correctly and other layered prevention strategies have taken place. The other layered prevention strategies would be the three feet of social distance, the additional hand washing, hand sanitizing. So once again, if students are wearing masks in school with three feet apart, they're not going to be quarantined. So again, from the Ohio Department of Health, the guidelines for quarantine after exposure to a positive case in K-12 classroom settings. Quarantine is not necessary for, all, for students and adults who were possibly exposed to COVID-19 if all the following prevention measures have been in place. The same three things that we talked about. Masking, physical distance, at least three feet, other COVID-19 prevention policies. And this goes on and lines up with the flow chart that we were given by the Ohio Department of Health that quarantine is not necessary for fully vaccinated students and adults. There are some things that do have to take place, but they can still come to school. They can still participate as long as there's no symptoms. They do have to take a test after three to five days, and they do need to wear a mask from the time of the, from the, time of the exposure indoors as much as possible. Additionally, if not all the prevention measures listed were above were in place, quarantine is not necessary for those who were not fully vaccinated if the person was exposed was wearing a face mask. So absent the face mask, you have to go back to the old quarantine methods, which means if your student is within six feet for 15 minutes or more in a classroom setting or anywhere within the building, then that child would have to be quarantined. So you see that by wearing the mask, we're able to not quarantine as many students. One of the things that I want to make sure that I'm clear on is that we allow a mask, a disposable mask, which we provide when students get on the bus or whenever they arrive at the building. We are also allowing a shield. Now, this is just one example. There's all kinds of different shields out there. This is what we just happen to have here, here at school. And we will allow students to wear the mask or the shield. One of the concerns was that students can't see the face of other people or uh, you can't read their lips, those kind of things. So having the shield is one option for that. Now I want to make it perfectly clear that the shield does not provide the same value of protection as a mask does. And this is very important that people understand this, that if you choose the shield, the shield will allow you to be able to attend school because it does satisfy our policy. But what the shield does not do is it does not satisfy 
the quarantine. So if you're wearing a shield, you would be subject to quarantine unlike the mask. And I want to make sure that people understand that, that the shield will not keep your child from being quarantined. Only the mask would keep your child from being quarantined. For those people who have children who can't wear a face mask or a face shield, we do have an exemption request form. You can pick this up at any of your buildings. You'll need to fill it out, take it to your doctor. Your doctor will check that the child can't wear a face mask, can't wear a face shield, or can't wear either. So there's options here for the doctor to check. They will list some reasoning behind that. Doctor will sign their name, and then more than likely, the student would end up being exempted from the face mask or face shield. Let me talk about some of the other things that we have in place. Our other COVID protocols, and this is in our continuity of service plan, we plan to still follow the CDC mandate that everyone riding a bus will wear a mask. I'll show you that uh, mandate here shortly. We will continue to sanitize each bus upon the conclusion of each route. Our lunches are going to be the same as last year in each building with the barriers for protection and social distancing as much as possible. And the reason for that is because that's time that our students do not have masks on and we want to limit, again, the quarantining as much as possible. Uh, each building will have an additional cleaning person throughout the day to go and clean and sanitize high traffic areas on a regular basis. We'll continue to disinfect desks as students, particularly at the middle and the high school where they go from one classroom to another, they will wipe down desks with disinfectant. At the, at the elementary building, last year we went to a self-contained setting where we kept students in one room basically with one teacher and that one teacher taught all subject areas. This year with our, especially our upper grades at the elementary level, we're going back to uh, away from, we're going away from the self-contained setting and back to a departmentalized setting that we've used for uh, many, many years, which is better uh, for education. But last year, in order to be as safe as possible, we ended up doing just the uh, self-contained. The classroom barriers that are in the rooms now, we will leave that up to the teacher because a lot of times those barriers were hindering vision and communication. But as long as the students are masked up, we will leave that judgment up to the classroom teacher. Um, I want to remind you that the, the uh, mask shield policy only applies to the inside of the building. So when our elementary students go outside for recess, they will be able to take their mask off. Uh, they will be able to play with their friends. And then last year we had groups that were only allowed to play with certain groups. This year we'll be able to have some more freedom uh, when it comes to that. And we're going to also encourage our teachers to take our kids outside as much as they possibly can, especially uh, as long as the, the weather permits us to be able to do so. In classrooms where social distancing is possible, um, for example, you could have maybe an advanced uh, class at the high school. There's four or five kids in there and they can easily social distance in a the classroom. They don't need to wear their mask as long as the teacher is okay with it. And there may be other settings, small classes in room, in particular rooms, they may be able to take their mask off and not wear their mask. We'll also be giving uh, mask breaks for our students. So let's go back to the reason behind the policy. Obviously, safety of our students, staff, and their families is of paramount concern. Secondly, we want to be able to stay in school. We'd love for things to be back to normal like it was three or four years ago. We're just not there yet. We know that it's very, very important for our students to stay with in-person learning. We believe that the best way for us to stay with in-person learning is to wear the mask, cut down on the quarantines. That way we can still provide everything that we normally do. There's nobody that wants to wear a mask. We understand that. But if we're not wearing the mask, we're probably going to be ending up quarantining so many students that we're gonna to have to end up shutting the buildings down. And then your extracurricular activities would also be at risk. I did say that I would touch on the bus mandate because one of the things that I've 
I've been hearing is that you know the CDC um, did not really say that they only said public transportation and school buses are not considered a part of public transportation but the actual what they actually said was that they specified including school buses during school transportation CDC's order, CDC's order applies to all public transportation conveyances including school buses the CDC is not saying that school buses are public transportation, but they are saying including school buses. So therefore, our students will be required to wear a mask while they're on a bus. In closing, we realize that nobody wants to wear a mask, but we want to make sure that we can keep our students, staff, and our families as safe as possible while also being able to do everything that we possibly can to keep our kids in school. Everyone knows that when we were forced to go remote for the long period of time, it was really hard on kids. You know, they were at home trying to do work all the time on the computer, uh, not a lot of socialization. Yes, if they come to school now having to wear a mask while it's, it's not something that everybody wants to do, but at least they can still be there at school with their friends, with their teachers, getting in-person instruction, um, be able to go to their after-school activities, be able to, in some cases, for some students, make sure that they get a couple of uh, meals a day. So it's very, very important that we are able to stay in school and have in-person learning. That is really the reason behind this whole thing. Safety of our students, and be able to do what we can to make sure that our students can come to school every day and have in-person instruction. I would advise you if you have any questions to please reach out to your uh, building principal regarding the uh, either the mask or shield. As I said there are different types of shields that are out there. This is not the only one. I mean there's different ones that you could purchase if you'd rather your child wear a shield. If you're okay with the mask we'll provide the mask for your student. Thank you very much and I hope you have a great school year.